Now that we've seen some basic ways to display the distribution of a single categorical variable, we can pursue some more interesting questions, like investigating how two categorical variables relate. To answer questions like this, again, useful displays play an important role in our analyses. Just as we can display the distribution of a single categorical variable in a frequency table, the most basic sort of display for two categorical variables is a two-way table, also called a contingency table. This sort of table gives us the values of one variable contingent on the value of the other. In this case, we see how the ticket class class variable for those aboard the Titanic is distributed across their survival status. So, for example, if I look in this cell of the table, I see that 118 of the passengers aboard the Titanic were second-class passengers who survived. On the other hand, I can see that 673 crew members did not survive. So we have these two categorical variables of ticket class and survival status for those aboard the Titanic displayed in a again, what's called a contingency table. And notice how we have totals in the margins of this contingency table. So if I look in this row, for example, I'll see the different numbers of people in each ticket class who survived, but at the very end, I see the total number of people that survived. Just like in the second row, at the end, we have the total number of people who did not survive. Thus, here at the end, we really just have a frequency table for survival status, not contingent of upon the ticket class, since this is just the total number of people who survived, this is the total number of people who did not. So in this context, the frequency distribution of a single categorical variable is called its marginal distribution, because we see it lies in the margins of the table. The frequency distribution for survival status is over here in the margin, and the frequency distribution for ticket class is down here in the margin. It is possible that you could be presented a two-way table just with this part in the middle, that is not including the marginal distributions. If you have such a table and you're conducting an analysis, one of the first things you should do is compute these marginal distributions of those single categorical variables. Now that we have this two-way or contingency table telling us the class and the survival status of those aboard the Titanic, we can start to ask some questions, like, is is there a meaningful relationship between class and survival? These questions concerning multiple categorical variables are a lot more interesting than anything we might ask about a single categorical variable. But to answer a question like this, percentages are a lot more useful. For example, I can see that 118 second class passengers survived, whereas more than that, 178 third class passengers survived. But that doesn't necessarily necessarily tell us that third-class passengers were more likely to survive than second-class passengers because it could just be that there were more third-class passengers overall, so of course you would expect more third-class passengers to survive. If we look at the percentages, we see results confirming what we would probably expect, which is that the higher-class, second-class passengers were more likely to survive. Although the number was fewer, 118 compared to 178, of the 285 second-class passengers, 41.4% of them survived, whereas of the 706 third-class passengers, only 25.2% of them survived. So you can see how calculating these percentages allows us to see some connection between ticket class and survival status. Since percentages make these questions easier to answer, we may think about including percentages in our two-way table, but it's not obvious how that should be done. How should we calculate these percentages? If we just look at the first cell, the 203 first-class passengers who survived, if I wanted to turn that into a percentage, I'd have three choices. I could look at 203 as some number of the alive passengers and divide it by 711 to get a percentage. Or I could look at 203 as a portion of the first class passengers and do division by 325 to get a percentage. Or I could just look at 203 as part of the total number of people aboard the Titanic and divide by 2,201 to get a percentage. So which should we use, the row total, 
the column total, or the table total. The fact of the matter is that all of these percentages could be useful, depending on what we're trying to study. However, displaying them all results in a pretty overwhelming table. This is the two-way table from before, but with all of those possible percentages included, the percent of the row, the percent of the column, and the percent of the table for each number that we had in the table. So the 203 first-class passengers who survived that was 28.6% of all passengers who survived, but it was 62.5% of first-class passengers, and only 9.2% of the total number of people aboard the Titanic. Coming over to this number, the 528 third-class passengers who did not survive, just to further show where these percentages come from, 528 divided by 1490, that's how we get 35.4%. That's the percent of the row. 528 is 35.4% of the 1,490 people who died. On the other hand, 528 is 74.8% of the 706 third-class passengers, and 528 is 24% of the total 2,201 on board. Again, the percentages we might actually want depends on what we're trying to study, so in practice, we wouldn't really want a table including all these percentages. It's overwhelming, it's not especially useful. Better to just pull out the percentages that we need. For example, we may just be examining what percent each of these cells makes up of the total number of people aboard the Titanic, in which case we would want to look at the table percents, which we could pull out into their own table just like this. Note that if we had focused on the row percents, each of these rows would add up to 100%, because in total they would make up 100% of the row. Since we pulled out the table percents, in total all of these numbers add to 100%, representing everybody aboard the Titanic. Again, the questions that we're trying to answer will determine what percentages we're looking for what division we do. Do we divide by row total, column total, or table total? We could ask, what percent were second-class passengers who survived? In that case, we're just asking about all people. Of all of them, what percent were second-class passengers who survived? To answer a question like that, we could use this table, which includes those table percents. Of all 2,201 people, 118 were second-class passengers who survived, and so that would be 5.4%, which again we could get from this table. You see those second-class passengers who survived, that's 5.4% the total. On the other hand, if we were asked what percent of second-class passengers survived, class is a categorical variable, which we're putting along the columns, so we would want to use a column total for that percent. So that would be 118 divided by 285, because there are 285 people in the second class, which we can get from this big table. You see there's 285 people in the second class, and if we look at the column percent in the second class, we have 41.4%. Again, that's because the second-class passengers who survived, that makes up 41.4% of its column, the column representing all second-class passengers. And there is still a third question we could ask, what percent of survivors were in the second class? To answer that question, we would have to look at the row percent. 118 second-class passengers survived of 711 people who survived, so we would have to do 118 18 divided by 711, which gives us this row percent of 16.6%. Again, that was 118 over 711, that's 16.6%. In each case, note that the numerators here are the same. We're looking at second-class passengers who survived, but in each case, we're considering it as a part of a different total. The first question is asking how much of all people on the Titanic this group makes up, the second question is asking specifically about second-class passengers and how many survived. And the third question is asking specifically of those who survived, what percent were in the second class. Let's finish with an example. A random sample of 790 college students from various universities in Canada and the United States was collected. 
Each participant completed a campus life survey that recorded each student's country of origin and their preferred extracurricular activity from the following options, sports team, debate club, community service, band, or a creative writing group. We see the data summarized in this two-way table. Again, we're seeing the counts of one variable contingent on the value of the other. The first question asks us to use the two-way table to calculate the marginal distribution of extracurricular preferences. So this is that distribution of totals, which would be in the margin here if the two-way table had been constructed with this included. So let's just copy the table down here, and we'll fill in the total column here in the margin, which is going to total up the extracurricular preferences in each category. And this is what that looks like, a total of 205 people people preferred to join a sports team, a total of 160 people preferred to join debate club, and so on. We're just adding across each row to get the total number of people who preferred each extracurricular activity, thus getting the marginal distribution of extracurricular preferences. Next, we're asked to make a graph to display the marginal distribution that we just calculated. What type of chart do you think we should use? A bar chart or pie chart or something else? A bar chart or pie chart would both work fine here. This is, of course, a categorical variable, the preferred extracurricular, and these totals add up to everybody that was surveyed, so we could use a pie chart. Each of these categories have no overlap. If someone prefers one thing, they don't prefer all of the other things. So a pie chart could work. We're going to go with the more classic bar chart, though. Remember, if the categories did overlap, a pie chart would not be appropriate, and we could still use a bar chart. In this case, the categories don't overlap, so we could use either one. But here is a bar chart representing this marginal distribution of extracurricular preferences. Each bar's height corresponds to the number of people that preferred the activity, although if we want wanted to, we could make this a relative frequency bar chart, where the height of each bar is determined by the percent of the total that fits in that category. For example, of the 790 total people surveyed, 25.95% of them preferred to join a sports team. Of the 790 people surveyed, 14.56% of them preferred creative writing, and so on. So we could use these percents in place of the counts if we wanted to. The bar chart would look the same. We would just be able to read percents from the chart as opposed to reading raw numbers. So that's how to display two categorical variables at once using a two-way table, also sometimes called a contingency table. We also talked about marginal distributions and, of course, how to calculate relevant percentages that help us compare across two categorical variables. Next time, we'll talk more about these percents and how to calculate the correct percents to analyze what's called a conditional distribution. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my statistics course and statistics exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and extra practice, and if you join at the premium tier or above, you can access the lecture notes used in my courses. Thanks for watching.